In this video we're going to take a detailed look at the compass rows which you'll find on all nautical charts. This particular chart has four different compass roses, so we've got one, two, third one's down here, and number four. We'll just use this one for our example today, so we can see there's different parts. At the top here we've just got a graphical representation of which way is north. Around the outside we've got the compass card or the dial or whatever you want to call it. It's basically just a protractor that's drawn straight on the chart, aligning with true north. So 000 and 180 align precisely with the vertical lines on the chart. Similarly, 090 and 270 align precisely with the horizontal lines on the chart. And what this means is that if you're taking bearings, you can line your parallel rules or your triangles or something up with the outside ring of the compass rows and use those to plot on the chart. And this is going to apply no matter which compass rows on the chart you use, so you can just use the one closest to what you need. For example, if we take a bearing of Cape Lookout Lighthouse over here and we find its bearing 350 degrees from us, we need to plot a line exactly 350 on the chart. So we bring our parallel rules over to our compass rows, align the centre up with 350 to get our parallel rules at the correct angle, and then we transfer those across to the lighthouse so that we can plot a line of position. Of course, we're not going to go into line of position in this video, that's a topic for another day. But what we're wanting to understand is that you use the compass rows to line up your parallel rules to plot precise angles on the chart. A little tip here from me, when you're looking at the compass rows, rather than aligning with the centre and the 350, what I do is I take the reciprocal of 350, which is 170, and I actually join the line between 170 and 350, checking that it goes through the centre, and it just gives me a much larger turning lever, so it makes it a lot easier to line up those parallel rules accurately. You've got double the distance, so it just improves the accuracy of everything you're doing. Anyway, let's reset this so we can get on to the next stage. So the next thing you need to notice is this little arrowhead, and this is the magnetic north indicator. It's telling you what way your magnetic compass is going to point if you're in this location. And we're going to use that to help us work out the direction of variation. Let me explain. True north is in this direction, and if we're navigating using a compass that points at true north, we don't need to do anything, it's going to correspond directly with the chart. This might apply if you've got a very accurate gyro compass, a fiber optic gyro or something like that, but if you're using a magnetic compass, that's not going to work. We've got to account for variation, which is the difference between the location of the true north pole and, well, the geographic north pole and the magnetic north pole. And that's where this little arrow comes in. Say we want to head on a heading of 035 degrees true. We know that that's 035 degrees around from true north. But we can use this arrow to immediately see what it is from magnetic north. We can immediately see that we need to add the variation to be able to get the magnetic heading. Looking down in the middle, we can see the variation is in the west. So we know that when the variation is in the west, we need to add it to a true bearing to turn it into a magnetic bearing. And this works no matter where on the compass you are. So say we're wanting to head due south. We know that's 180 around from true north. But from magnetic north, we're going to need to add on our variation to be able to navigate properly. And that's all that this arrow does. It's just like a, a prompt, so you don't need to remember the mnemonics. You remember the ones that say variation west magnetic best or variation east magnetic least. I, I don't find those helpful because it could be variation west magnetic best or variation west true best. It, it, they don't really stick. But using this indicator on the compass rows really does help. Anyway, let's reset again, and the final clues are in the middle bit here, and it's the data that we're given that allows us to work out exactly what the variation is doing. It's a little hard to read, but what it says is variation is 10 degrees, 45 minutes west, 
in 2011. This means that back in 2011, this arrow up here was pointing in the exact right direction. But of course, we're not in 2011 anymore. So we need to take account of this bottom part, which says there's an annual increase of two minutes. So in 2012, this variation had increased by two minutes, giving us 10 degrees, 47 minutes west, and so on. So of course, at the time of filming, we're in 2022, which is 11 years after 2011. So we have to do the 11 years times two minutes to give us 22 minutes difference. We know that that's an increase. So we have 10 degrees, 45 minutes plus 22 minutes, giving us 10 degrees, 67 minutes. And of course, 60 breaks down into a whole degree. So we just drop the degree down here. So we get 11 degrees, seven minutes west in 20 22. Now I'm not going to pretend that you're going to be able to navigate to within two minutes of a degree, but in some places you will find that increase can be over a degree. So you should always take into take it into account and work it out, transfer this to be your current year, so that you're navigating and applying variation correctly. Now the same thing applies on all the other compass roses on the chart, but if we zoom in close, we can see that there are differences in the variation. So this one, the variation is 13 degrees, zero minutes west with no annual change. So in this location, it's never gonna change. We'll go down to the other one. We'll notice 11 degrees west, and that's got an increase again of two minutes. So that's similar to what we had before. And then this one over here, has got a larger annual increase. So it's eight degrees west with an increase of four minutes. So down here, variation is going to be changing a lot more over time. What this tells you is that if you're navigating magnetically, you need to be using the compass rows that's closest to your location to apply the variation correctly. But if you're using the compass roses to do true navigation on the chart taking bearings, they're all identical. It really doesn't matter which one you use because true bearings are the same across the chart. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. But if you've got any further questions, leave them in the comments down below because I can always make a follow up video on in the future if you're unsure of anything. I'd also love to hear what you feel about this new style of video. I'm experimenting making these type of tutorials much quicker so that I can actually make this channel able to help out more people when they're learning navigation. So again, let me know down in the comments down below of what you think of this, any videos you'd like in the future, and generally what you'd like to see on the channel. Otherwise, we'll see you next week with another tutorial.